I'm Dr. Frida. Today we will be discussing the kidney diet, how to eat right when you have kidney disease. Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with kidney disease and you want to do your best to keep that kidney disease from worsening or progressing to dialysis? Are you a dialysis patient who is struggling with what you should and should not eat? Or are you a totally healthy person with healthy kidneys and you intend to keep it that way? Well, today I'm going to give you five tips on the kidney diet, how to eat properly when you have kidney disease and how to prevent it. Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida. I'm a triple board certified medical doctor and I practice nephrology at Emory University Hospital Midtown. I'm also the medical director of a dialysis unit with DCI here in Atlanta, Georgia. As a nephrologist, I counsel my patients day in and day out on how to eat properly. And today I'm going to give you five tips on the kidney diet how to eat properly when you have kidney disease, and I'll give you tips on how to prevent kidney disease. Question, if you are on the kidney diet, what do you find is the hardest part about following that kidney diet? And what do you do to make sure that you follow the diet anyway? Please give us some tips and comment down below. The best diet for kidney function varies depending on your percent of kidney function or your EGFR, estimated glomerular filtration rate. Be sure to consult your physician and ask what your EGFR is. If your EGFR is less than 60 milliliters per minute, then you will benefit from a kidney diet. Remember, today I'm going to give you some guidelines for the kidney diet, but you need to consult your physician and your nutritionist to find out the specifics of the kidney diet that are best for you, okay? Let's get started. Five tips for the kidney diet. How to eat properly when you have kidney disease. Tip number one, protein intake. We need protein to build our muscles, to help us to fight infections, and to help us to heal. So protein is important. But if you have an EGFR of less than 60 milliliters per minute, and you are not nephrotic, and you are not on dialysis already, then a modest protein restriction can actually help you. Restricting your protein or decreasing the protein in your diet when you have kidney disease can actually delay the progression of kidney disease. It can keep the kidneys from getting worse and it can delay your time for having to go on dialysis for years. So what should be your protein restriction? Well, we recommend that the protein restriction be between 0.6 grams per kilogram and 0.8 grams per kilogram of protein per day. So somewhere around between 60 to 80 grams of protein in your diet per day. And again, that's if your EGFR is less than 60 milliliters, but you're not yet on dialysis. So this will give you a CKD or chronic kidney disease stage of three, four, or five, as long as you're not on dialysis yet. In addition to helping to delay the progression of kidney disease, a modest protein restriction can also decrease toxins in your body. It can decrease the BUN or that blood urea nitrogen. It can decrease those uremic toxins or those kidney poisons that the kidneys are supposed to be filtering out. A modest protein restriction in your diet can also help to decrease your acid load. It can help make your blood a little more alkaline, which is helpful. Good sources of protein in the diet include lean meats like grilled fish or grilled chicken. You can also have plant-based sources of protein. So even if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you can still get your good protein sources. Just be sure to consult your physician and to consult your dietitian. Modest protein restriction is also good for patients who have diabetic kidney disease. Diabetes is the number one cause of kidney failure please watch my YouTube video on diabetes after you finish watching this video. So patients who have diabetic kidney disease who are not yet on dialysis, this modest protein restriction is excellent for you as well. So 
Again, if you have an EGFR of less than 60, but you're not nephrotic and you're not on dialysis, then a modest protein restriction is number one tip for a good kidney diet. Now, if you are a patient who is already on dialysis, if you have ESRD or end-stage renal disease or ESKD, end-stage kidney disease, then we actually do not want you to have this protein restriction. In fact, we want you to have protein because studies show that if you are a dialysis patient and you have a good and proper protein intake, then this can help to make you a healthier patient and it can even prolong your life. Dialysis patients, you know, we check these labs every month and we look for that protein in your blood or that albumin, which we want to be greater than 4.0. So dialysis patients, please do not restrict your protein, but consult your dietitians and your nephrologists on your proper protein intake. Tip number one for the kidney diet, protein intake. Tip number two, low salt intake. Patients who have kidney disease should have a low salt or sodium intake. It should generally be less than two grams of sodium per day, but no less than 1.5 grams of sodium per day. When you have a decreased sodium intake, this helps to decrease hypertension or high blood pressure, which incidentally, high blood pressure is the second leading cause of kidney failure. Please watch my video on high blood pressure and ways to lower blood pressure naturally after you finish watching this video. Having a low salt diet can also slow the progression to kidney disease and it can help to improve cardiovascular outcomes. Ways to avoid having high salt intake, be a label watcher. When you pick up food, take a look at the nutrition facts on the label, at the sodium. It'll tell you how much sodium in milligrams or grams. And so try to stay under two grams of sodium in 24 hours. Also, try not to be a salt shaker. I know a lot of people, as soon as they get a meal, they'll grab that salt even before they taste their food and start putting salt on the food. Taste your food first and try to get accustomed to lower salt. Also, try to avoid a lot of fried foods, salty chips, salty popcorn, a lot of processed food. Tip number two, low salt diet. It's excellent for kidney disease. Tip number three, potassium intake. Potassium is a mineral found in many of the foods we eat, like bananas and tomatoes. And potassium is important in our bodies because it helps to regulate our heartbeats and it also helps to give us good muscle function. When your kidneys function properly, they are responsible for filtering out potassium in your body and they help to maintain a good and proper potassium balance. If you have kidney disease, however, your potassium may not be filtered out by your kidneys properly and you may develop elevated potassium in the blood or hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia can cause many problems. If your potassium in your blood is too high, it can cause abnormal heart rhythms or cardiac arrhythmias. It can even cause the heart to stop. So if you are a person with kidney disease and you have high potassium in the blood, it is very important that for your kidney diet, you have a low potassium diet. Now, the EGFR, that estimated glomerular filtration rate, is important again in dealing with potassium. Usually, kidney patients don't require potassium restriction until that EGFR is less than 30 or when they are in CKD stage 4. But for some patients with kidney disease, they may require potassium restriction even at higher EGFRs, especially if they're taking medicines that have a side effect of giving you high potassium. Some medicines that can cause high potassium as a side effect include ACE inhibitors like lisinopril or angiotensin receptor blockers like losartan or medications like spironolactone. So what your potassium should be in your diet will vary depending on your EGFR or on medications you're taking. So again, it's very important that you consult your physician Find out what your potassium level is so you know what potassium restriction or what potassium level is best for your diet. Now, for patients who do not have kidney disease at all, you should have potassium, anywhere from two to five grams of potassium a day because potassium is a mineral that is good for you, but it has to be in balance, not too high and not too low. Dialysis patients, for you, 
your potassium is largely being cleared through your dialysis, whether it's hemodialysis or home dialysis, peritoneal dialysis like PD. So for you, it's important that you follow your nephrologist recommendations and the recommendations of your dietitian to find out what your potassium restriction should be. Here are some foods that tend to have high potassium that you want to avoid having a whole lot of if you are a person with hyperkalemia or high potassium. Bananas have high potassium, tomatoes, avocados, spinach, broccoli. I'm not saying that you have to avoid these foods altogether, but make sure you're aware of the foods that have high potassium so that if you need to restrict the potassium in your diet, you're able to make wise choices. Tip number four for the kidney disease diet, phosphorus intake. Phosphorus is another mineral in the body. It, along with calcium, helps to give you healthy, strong bones. Typically, when the kidneys work well, they will filter out the excess phosphorus in the body. But if you are a patient with kidney disease, then you may have high levels of phosphorus in your blood or hyperphosphatemia. Hyperphosphatemia can lead to problems. It can cause an increase in your PTH or parathyroid hormone, which can lead to weak bones or increase your chances for bone fractures or broken bones. High phosphorus can also lead to deposits in the blood vessels and the lungs. It can lead to cardiovascular issues. So you definitely want to maintain a normal level of phosphorus in the blood. If you are a person with kidney disease, usually this phosphorus level is not affected until that EGFR is less than 60 or you have CKD stage three or worse, CKD4, CKD5. In that case, you should be limiting the amount of phosphorus intake. It should be limited to around 800 milligrams and certainly no more than one gram per 24 hours. In particular, you want to avoid inorganic phosphorus. So what kinds of foods do you need to avoid? You need to avoid heavily processed foods. You need to avoid dark sodas, cheese, milk. You want to avoid chocolate, ice cream. Some of these things I know sound a little bit miserable. And again, I'm not being absolute. I'm not saying you can never ever have ice cream again or never have chocolate. What I'm saying is that these are things that tend to have high levels of inorganic phosphorus. And so you need to be aware of the foods that you want to have in moderation or in very, very limited levels. Because again, hyperphosphatemia is problematic when you have kidney disease. For patients who are on dialysis or even patients who have EGFRs of less than 30, if you have CKD4, CKD5, then you may also need to take a medication to help you to have a low phosphorus, a phosphorus binder. You take these medications with your meals and they help to bind to the phosphorus so that your body never has a chance to absorb it. Patients who are on a kidney disease diet who have elevated phosphorus need to have phosphorus restriction in the diet. If you are a patient who does not have kidney disease and you have normal phosphorus, then you do not need to limit your phosphorus. Just make sure you follow up with your primary care physician regularly so you know what your phosphorus levels are. Tip number five for the kidney diet, water intake. If you are a patient with kidney disease who is not on dialysis, then you want to be sure that you have an adequate water intake in order to prevent the progression of kidney disease and to delay your need for dialysis. A lot of patients who come into the hospital who end up on dialysis or having kidney failure have it because of dehydration or not enough water, pre-renal azotemia. And this is actually a little known fact. So yes, having enough water can help to prevent the progression of kidney disease. Now, the amount of water you need will vary. For most people, it's anywhere between two and three liters of water a day, depending on your activity, depending on how much you sweat or how much you do. But if you generally have about four of those 16 ounce bottles of water, anywhere from four to six or even more, then that should be an adequate amount of water intake. Consult your physician to find out what water intake is appropriate for you. Now, if you are a person who has contraindications to having too much water, then that water intake will vary. For example, if you have CHF or congestive heart failure, then you will need to have a fluid restriction. Again, consult your physician and find out the proper water intake for you. 
Now for patients who are on dialysis, you should be restricting the water intake, especially if you're no longer making urine. If you are a dialysis patient and you make no urine, if you drink excessive amounts of fluid, excessive amounts of water, then you will have volume overload. You will have swelling in your legs, your ankles, you'll have edema. You can also get fluid to build up in your lungs and that can cause you to have shortness of breath or respiratory distress. Also dialysis patients, if you drink too much fluid, if you gain too much water weight in between treatments, this can stress your heart and it can even cause you to have abnormal heart rhythms. That is why we are constantly asking you, please do not gain too much weight in between dialysis treatments. It can be detrimental to your health. So for patients who are not on dialysis with kidney disease, you want to make sure you have an appropriate water intake to slow the progression of kidney disease. And for patients who are on dialysis or who don't make any urine, you want to have a fluid restriction. So tip number five for the kidney diet, water intake. Question. I know a lot of people watching this video will have varying degrees of activities. You might be a person who exercises a lot and you sweat a lot and you drink a lot of water, or you may be a patient I described who has congestive heart failure. Let me know what your physician has recommended for you as far as water intake. Please comment down below. These are some general guidelines on the kidney diet, how to eat properly with kidney disease. And I threw in some tips on how to try to prolong your good kidney function if you have no kidney problems. I just want you to live your healthiest, happiest life. Another way to help to live your healthy, happy life is to download my free PDF, 10 Healthy Habits for a Better You and a Better Life. This is a healthy habits checklist that I live by myself. It helps me and I'm sure that it will help you too. So please go ahead and download that free PDF. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and click the notification button. Also, please follow me on Instagram at Dr. Frida. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you for watching. I'm Dr. Frida.